question is from S. Robertson19. I'm about to move on to phase two of map starter, and I was wondering how I can tell when I'm ready to add more weight to a lift. Is it once I can do over 12 reps with the current weight? Oh, this is great. This is like the opposite of the last question mm-hmm. that we just we mm-hmm. just addressed. Yeah, when, you, when you're when you doing an exercise, first off, um, you should have a target rep range. So you should be saying to yourself, okay, d- you know, depending on the workout. Should have unplugged. I'll finish what you're saying there right you now. There you go. Yeah, depending on yeah, your- Yeah, sorry, my mic- my, my, my No, my, uh, all, of, all of our programs, there's a reason why it says like, you know, eight to 10 reps or 12 to 15 reps or six to eight is- and we did a YouTube video on this on like how, first of all how to choose the right weight first, right? So I, I want to wait. My goal is to kind of fall somewhere in between that the, the very first time because what I don't want is if it says eight to ten reps, I don't want to be struggling at rep seven and barely be able to get out eight. If that's the case, then I need to back off the weight and I need to do a lighter weight, a weight that I'm hitting the low the first part eight right really easily. Nine, maybe I'm starting to feel that 10. It was like a real struggle to get 10 out. So I'm kind of landing right in between there. When you get to the point where you're doing on the the high end, so if the rep range is eight to 10 reps or eight to 12 reps, and you're doing 12 easily, and you could have easily squeezed out two or three more reps, that's time to, to move the weight up a little bit. Yeah. So that's what you're looking for. You're looking for in any any program, especially anyone that we write, where we give you a range. If you're hitting the higher range with ease and you know you can easily get two or three more reps out and you're you're stopping it just because we tell you to stop there, now it's time to increase the weight right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. I, I Sometimes I think we, we try to add weight uh, because we think to ourselves, I think I can do yeah. five more. It's probably not the best time to add weight unless you're you're a competitor like a power lifter and you're really trying to push the you know how much weight you push can lift. The envelope, yeah. I would say when your form is perfect and you're able to do the set with uh, a, a moderate to low intensity, so you're doing ten reps and it just feels good, then you add weight. Then you can start to scale up and add more weight. But stay within your rep range. You know, um, uh, it, it, you know this person asked and said if I can do over twelve reps at the current <laughs> weight. I mean, it depends. I mean, if your goal is to do 20 reps, then get to the point where you can do 24 reps, uh, 25 reps, then add weight so you can stay under the 20 rep range. If your goal is four reps, same thing. Once you get to the point where you do six or eight reps, add weight so you go back down to four. There's also another way that I love to teach increasing intensity here without manipulating with weight. Manipulate tempo. Mm -hmm. So if you get to a point where you're uh, being able to rep it out 12 times really easy, well, you guess what? I, get, I bet you if you added one second to each rep, one second on the eccentric portion of the exercise of each one of those reps, that gets extremely more difficult. I like that because sometimes people don't have access to more weight. So let's say you're working out at home mm-hmm. and you have up to 15 pound or 20 pound dumbbells. You know, I've had this happen before with clients. I can only do, you know, I can already do 15 reps mm-hmm. and it's really easy for me. What do I do? And it's like, slow down. Yeah, slow your reps down. I've always like that for form too. Yes, like, that's why I'm, yeah. it's, it's a great place to take somebody who's kind of a beginner, and it's like, so for example, if you get Especially down, a beginner, you get yeah. down right now, and uh, most people, or you know, or a good portion of people, can uh, rep out ten push-ups really fast, pump them out. Right. But and and that ten push-ups took them ten, maybe twelve seconds, fifteen seconds tops. Do do those same ten push-ups with a tempo that takes you thirty seconds to do that you will notice a huge difference in intensity. And what's great is it sends a new signal to the body. Like it's, just because it's the same movement doesn't mean that it won't promote more muscle growth. But it's because you're now manipulating one of the factors, which is tempo, yeah. in that you'll see you'll get a good positive signal building muscle. It's you know, a great you know way to when, do it. You know when bodybuilders were doing a lot of that, messing with tempo, during uh, World War II, because it was very, very hard to buy iron for weights uh, because uh, they, they were using it to build airplanes and bombs and stuff like that. So gyms weren't able to buy lots of weights. So the weights were real light. And so that was the time that bodybuilders were like, okay, what do we do? Let's start training much slower. Yeah. So you actually had bodybuilders uh, during the period of, d- during that World War II period who were who built their bodies using these kind of slower reps. I, I like that tip so much too because, and I've, I know I've said it on the show at least a handful of times where – you know, if you look in a gym, I think one of the one of the most uh, underrated tools that I see the, the majority using is is the tempo portion or the slowing down the portion of the eccentric portion of the exercise. Where look, the next time you walk in the gym, somebody bench pressing, doing dumbbell curls, doing shoulder press, and pay attention on the way down when they're lowering the weight, the easier part of the exercise. See if you can count four seconds in your head 
And that's the protocol for hypertrophy. So if, you know, the ideal timing for hypertrophy when training an exercise like that is a good four second negative. You'll rarely see that. You normally see one to two seconds. No, you so, never see that. Right. So if, if, if you're getting to a place where you're strong enough with a weight or your body weight, in this case, in a rep, and you want to uh, increase your intensity and you want to do it properly without risking injury, one of the best, best places. And by the way, I said four seconds. It doesn't mean you can't do five or six seconds either. You know, slow down the rep. It'll increase the intensity. And like Justin's point, you work on your form. And then two, you don't increase your risk factor. Yep. And as a matter of fact, that the tempo becomes more important as you get older, uh, for sure, because as you handle heavier and heavier weights, the risk of injury, uh, you know, goes up if your form is off a little bit. So it's a really good skill to learn. Um, and as you age, you just slow down the reps. But yeah, that all being said, once you get out of your rep range and you feel comfortable and your form is real good, just go ahead and add weight. Uh, it's not it's not that big of a deal. Just go ahead and add weight, but don't add it if you have this mentality. Don't think to yourself like, can I do five more pounds? I think I can squeeze out five more pounds. A lot of guys do that, and that's when form goes out the window.